as you guys know, gambling is more and more prevalent now in sport. It is more just all over the place. It is. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is the first Super Bowl Sunday that us Ontarians get to gamble on sport. He's usually here talking fantasy football with me. But, folks, Andy McNamara and I today are taking you through a degenerate's guide to Super Bowl 57. Yeah. Andy, how are we doing? I'm good, brother. Good, Griff. How are you? I'm doing great. It's Super Bowl week. It's Tuesday. It kind of sucks that it's the end of the football season. But you know what? It's always a good day. When I get to talk to you, especially here on episode number 212 of YWC Ooh. Football Talk. Now, folks, I get to say this because I finally have credentials for it. Now part of the Cryer Media family. If you're watching on YouTube, it's up in the top right corner of your screen. Very nice. Congratulations, man. Hey, 212, you keep at it. Keep going. Good things happen. Like, hopefully, our, our picks for this, uh, this Super Bowl. Yes, yes, they are. Yes, they are. And there is one here um, that... I'm going to go through it right now. This is I'm going through the FanDuel Sportsbook for my odds. Okay. And one that I wanted to take, but I'm not going to, is our is our little prize prize position, Boston Scott. He's plus 550. <laughs> I was going to ask you about, about if we're putting a Boston Scott play, and I'm glad you started there. <laughs> one that I love, though, to score, and it's a long shot, but he just got activated off IR, and that is Clyde Edwards-Hilaire at plus 1,000. It's a long shot value play, but when you think about it and in the Super Bowls, it's there's always someone or there's always someone who does something you don't expect. It's kind of like how David Tyree with the helmet catch, mm -hmm. it's the James Harrison run back, it's Sony Michelle scoring the only touchdown Super Bowl 50 53, it's Corey Clement scoring, it's the Philly special. With uh, Trey Burton throwing a touchdown to Nick Foles, it's James White being the hero of Super Bowl 51. So when it comes to the Super Bowl, folks, don't always look at the big name guys, but him and also, too, for value. I know his ankles banged up, but Patrick Mahomes, too, at plus 550 to get into the end zone are two odds that I love for scorers on Sunday. I'll give yeah. a Philly one in a second, but I just want your thoughts on those, too. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes jumped out to me again, uh, even with the ankle. I thought we might have seen it in the AFC Championship game that he ran one in just to sort of try to stick it to everyone and say, look how look at the ankle. I'm, I'm, I'm looking good. I could see the Patrick Mahomes one happening. That Clyde Edwards later, that's a tasty one. I I like that one. That's that's what you're right, though. It's one of those guys because immediately our mind jumps to Pacheco. Yes. He's been the guy. But that Chiefs backfield is committee by nature. Right, so there's no shirt. We're not talking about a true bell cow in Pacheco. I could see Clyde Edwards alone there, and you know what, Griff, I and I can't point my finger as to necessarily why, and I don't particularly like the player, but the name Kadarius Tony anytime touchdown just keeps slapping me in the face. I don't know why. And just looking at it, I'm like plus four hundred, plus four hundred. Like again, can't we see in this Kansas City offense a I don't know, a sweep, a reverse, or something, you know, at the 15 yard line, and Kadarius Tony takes it in. I could see that happening. I, I can see that happening too, just because, like you were saying earlier, it's always those, like, like I was saying, the unexpected players. Yeah. Like even another one, um, if you want value, like someone like Marquez Valdez Scantling, who had a really good AFC championship yeah, game, right. plus 240, Juju Smith Schuster, plus 310. Um, another one too, which is on the other side, like, look, I want to bet Travis Kelsey because it's probably a given, but unless you're parlaying it, it's not worth it because he's only mm -hmm. minus 115. Another player on the other side I like, though, I'm going to give you two props for this man. That is Dallas Goddard, plus 175 to score, and his receiving is really good. His receiving, let me find it a second, Dallas Goddard, over 49 and a half yards. Okay, okay. Hurst and Evan Ingram always got into that 30 to 40 region, but Dallas Goddard is a much better tight end than both those players combined. So when I look at that, if you parlay it, oh, let, let, let me just do it quickly. Let me go onto the FanDuel machine. Let me grab his yards and let me grab Dallas Goddard in. You can parlay it for plus 291, so basically meaning $10 or $100, if you will, will win you $290. Uh, you know what? That's not bad. I, I'm, I'm looking to... Um... If you get into the, you know, we, we like to be uh, dip our toe in the degenerate gambler pool. If we want to get, if we want to go ankle deep here, Griff, how about a two touchdown day prop play? And that's where you mentioned Travis Kelsey and anytime yes. touchdown doesn't play well, but a 
two or more touchdown day for Travis Kelsey pays out. Now I'm looking on the DraftKings Sportsbook, so pick your sportsbook, but plus 475 for a two or more touchdown day for a Travis Kelsey. That makes a lot of sense to me. Now, if you would have done that similar play for a Miles Sanders the other week, he's paying plus 600 right now. So you would have got, you know what I mean? Like this, you, you, those are the ones you pick. Who else for Kansas City, if you're going to get a multiple touchdown day, who else can you truly rely on other than Travis Kelsey? If it's not Kelsey, it's and Mahomes isn't going to be able to necessarily, I don't think, improv and move as much as he would like. He looked pretty nimble, but probably not as much. Everybody else is a bit of a guess. Judas yeah. Schuster, we talked about Scantling. Tone, th- th- they're, they're guys that you can talk yourself in. The only true weapon is Travis Kelsey. Brother versus brother, of course, one of the storylines. I can see Travis Kelsey getting that deuce right there. I like that too. FanDuel has it at plus 500 and then Ooh, uh, there. and then Miles Sanders is plus 700. Folks, for all your best ban- gambling odds, download the BetStamp app. Use code promo code GRIFFB when downloading. BetStamp is your best place to shop for in Canada for all your sports betting odds. If you're in the United States, feel free to use Pickett as well. Um, have to get the shameless plug in there. The other one that I like all here... That, brother. You know that. The <laughs> other one that I like as well is Jalen Hurts over one and a half passing touchdowns. I mm. think that yeah. it's just yeah. one of those things where we saw Burrow throw the ball effectively against this Kansas City team. We saw Trevor Lawrence throw the ball well against this Kansas City team. I think that taking, like, say if you want to do for an example, do a fun one here. Take Jalen Hurts over one and a half passing touchdowns. But here's the other thing, too. If you really want to get risky, you can either do his rushing at 49 and a half, or you can take the man on the other side of the ball, Patrick Mahomes, 19 and a half rushing yards. Ooh. I know the ankle's a thing. I know the ankle's a thing. I know. I know. Hear me Uh, out. Okay. Okay. It's one of those things where I think if they're going to win, he's going to have to run. And guess what? When you're going up against that ferocious Philly line, Mm you're going to have to get the ball out. And either if his receivers can't get open, he's going to scramble. So Patrick Mahomes at 19 and a half yards rushing, that's, it just sounds too good to pass up. Now, Griff, you know what? This is what you mentioned that pass rush, that defensive Philly. Yeah. And this is making me think a little bit. Do you remember the graphic when Mahomes and the Chiefs lost to, to uh, Tom Brady and the Bucks, And Absolutely. they had that graphic where it looked like a preschooler scribbling about the behind the line of scrimmage running that Patrick Mahomes had to do. So I think with the amount of sacks that that Philly defense has had this year, we might be looking at a lot of running. I just don't know if it's going to be in the positive yardage scenario, but there's certainly a path to it. There's certainly a path to it, man. It's I'm going to say myself, I like where your head's at. I'm going to fade on that one. But if, you, if you're going with the any – really, here's the play. If you're doing an anytime touchdown thing, you, you might want to look at to that maybe as an, an add-on, right? Jump, jump uh, uh, on top of that one. But the overall, that Philly defense is the real deal. And Kansas City's D is a little underrated too. So, But that one-and-a-half touchdowns for Jalen Hurts, I like. Because we're not talking like four touchdowns. You don't have to have a historic no. day. Two touchdowns he throws, and he runs one in. You know, now are there any total touchdowns like pass on uh, on Hertz? Are there any odds on those? Total touchdowns, not that I've seen. I know for a fact though that it's uh, there's the for him to run for two touchdowns, but I don't feel like that's mm. likely. But if you really want to go goofy and go with our gut, you can take Boston Scott at plus seven thousand to get two <laughs> touchdowns on the day, which oh I doubt. God. I would love to take his rushing yards, but Ooh. he's not available. You know who is available and who's been pretty reliable for Philadelphia, though, and his rushing yards is low? One, Kenneth Gainwell, over 19 and a half as well. So that's mm. one to seriously consider. But I know that other sports books have had it because I had a friend text me late last night about it, and I'm like, um, okay, that's fine. But Boston Scott is over seven and a half yards total. They love I think I have on the to, goal line. I think I have to. Uh, uh, put some dollars on a Boston Scott anytime touchdown just because. I think just because do. that's our thing. Yeah, that's the, that's the last time we <laughs> get a thing. football until September. We, we I, I think, I think we got to do it now. Here's, here's with Gainwell. Here's my, my thought on it. And I like the player. The trouble has been, and I think he's improved a little bit on it, but the pass protection has been an issue, and that's why he hasn't been able to overtake Miles Sanders because 
he isn't necessarily on the field enough because of those, you know, he's only five, nine, five, nine, two hundred. Um, but the pass protection is still coming along. It's still a work in progress. So my concern is that the chiefs are going to try to dial up Chris Jones, obviously as much as possible, probably move him around a little bit. Um, and so if I'm looking at that, then I'm thinking, well, how much will they be able to trust having Kenneth Gainwell on the field compared to other games? But then you look at it, and you know what, Griff? You went for what 112 yards in the uh, div- against the uh, against the Giants, right? So maybe they're trusting him a little bit more now. I have one for you that's really good. If you're worried about his rushing yards, rushing plus receiving 32 and a half. Mm, okay, you can interest me in that. What's that's that, where it gets interesting. Oh, that's his rushing plus his receiving. The other person to consider for that potentially, but there's Pacheco at 68 and a half. There's Sanders. Oh, Miles Sanders at 68 and a half combined rushing and receiving. That's a juicy one. Yeah, that's not but, too bad. Yeah. The other one too is Jarek McKinnon, but Jarek McKinnon really had a bad AFC championship game. Um, the one here I would consider if you really want to have a fun time and it's plus 112 at FanDuel, Jalen Hurts over 250 passing yards. Over 250. Yeah. That might be a bit too spicy. That might be a bit too hot for me. I might have or, to get some, I might have to get, take some milk with that one. Yeah. But then with Mahomes, because with Mahomes, I'm just looking at his alt passing yards because the way that Hertz's is uh, current line is set up for passing yards is 238 and a half. That's where it's there. So that's where I was looking at it for the plus money. If you want to look at plus money for, if you want to look at plus for Patrick Mahomes, you have to wait until 300 yards, and that's at plus 108. Mm, I don't like that against that Philly defense. I, I, I don't, don't like either. the 300. I would because only- I don't think, Griff, this is, uh, this. I hope, anyway, it's not going to be a blowout. I think it should be close. Um, and so uh, that's why the 300 yards spooks me a little bit. The 250 for Hertz spooks me a bit. Where I like is the alternate spread. Because at one and a half point, that's a pick em, right? You're, You're pick- looking at a pick em. Take the money line if you're going to take the spread of that. Well, point. the thing is, if you look at the alternate spreads, though, you get into that game. Then you're looking. If you get to two and a half, you're almost at even money. So you're up. You're up from that uh, that original one and a half. And if you go three or three and a half, I probably wouldn't go higher than three. Then you're in plus money. So those alternate spreads, if you think, uh, you know, whoever you think is going to win, I personally think the Eagles will win. But Ooh. if you think that. Um, you know, let's say for fun, Eagles are going to win. All right. Are they going to win by one or two points? Like maybe, right? But if you're feeling field goal, then take the chance. And it's a small chance, two and a half to three points. You get the better payout. Other than, other than that, you're, yeah, you might as well just go money line or whatever, right? It's not uh, not too exciting. Yeah, exactly. And the other one too, by the way, there's another prop I found with Dallas Goddard, or a boy, because I was looking for it earlier, but oh. I couldn't. Total receptions over four and a half. I got burned with this on AJ Brown in the AM- NFC Championship game. It was the same number. He had four through the first two quarters and then didn't touch the ball again. Oh. But Dallas Goddard at four and a half touches. I'm like, that looks really, really good. Like even gain. Oh, and gain well too. If you really want to have some fun, one and a half. What? Ooh. Yes. Okay. 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 I'm saving my winner for the official Super Bowl preview, and that was going to be a question I asked you, but you blurted it out that you think the Eagles are going <laughs> to win. Yes. Um, the other play I look at here and I love for this game is the under 50 and a half points. I think this is going to be not a defensive dogfight, but I just think that it's going to be a very similar game to what we saw three years ago when Kansas City beat San Francisco. I'm not saying I think Kansas City is going to win. I don't know. I'm not saying Philly's going to win. I just think that you're not going to get this like high powered explosive Mm. game, especially because the Chiefs haven't had a lot of those games recently. Like their game against Jacksonville was 27 to 20. It was 27 to 20. And then the game against Cincinnati, 23 to 20. That's 43 and that's 47. For the Chiefs, the last time the Chiefs hit an over successfully, it may have been week 18. Yeah, it was week, uh, not even week 18. Uh, the last time where both teams were competitive was their game against the Broncos and then the Texans. Meanwhile, mm. with the Philadelphia Eagles, um, you got to write out that 49ers game. That doesn't count for the yeah, against Purdy. Yeah, yeah, the the, the, the Purdy list game, and then even the divisional round game was 30, 35 to seven. The last game where they won, where the over hit was 
week 14 when I first put you on to Boston Scott. I was also the last mm. time you were on this podcast. They did also hit the over on Christmas Eve, but we don't count that as well just because that was the Jalen Hurtsless game. That was the game they lost to the Dallas Cowboys with Gardner Minshew at quarterback. Right. So when it comes to a game like this, and here's the other thing too, the under is hit the last time, well, ironically, the last time an over a game was like high, very high scoring in the Super Bowl was the Eagles Super Bowl win five years ago against New England. So for that, the under has been the money the last four years so far so we'll see mm. if it continues sunday so that's just where i think it's going to be i'm going to also there's one bet that people could make i know you can make it on FanDuel, and it's a score that i'm going to give right now okay. i'm not saying who i think is going to win but i'm going to say this right now as i know you can do All right, say for example if uh okay so that's not fair where is it um i don't know where it is but basically you can do um you basically can do the final score, and my final score that I have right now is twenty-four to seventeen. That's what I have the score of the game being. Really? Oh, I hope it's closer than that. I, I think it's gonna be like I want. I was thinking like twenty-seven to twenty-four, or twenty-seven to or twenty-four to twenty, or twenty-four to twenty-seven. But if I were to go twenty-four to twenty Eagles, that pays out twelve plus twelve thousand. Those are <laughs> lottery odds. So basically, if I were to put ten dollars on that score and that score hits, I win twelve hundred dollars. Think Ooh, about that. Let's I can, go. Yeah. So let's hope for a good day for your boy. Or if you want to think the Eagles are going to win by it, you can also. Yeah. There's a lot of goofy scores here. I have to scroll past like all the Chiefs scores. But if you think the Eagles are going to win by twenty four to twenty, it's the same odds, but it's plus nine thousand for twenty four to seventeen. Or if you think the here's a fun one you can do. Plus 36,000, 26 to 19. If you're a weirdo who likes Scorigami, $100 will win you $36,000. You <laughs> one of those weird scores. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, well, and you know, by that score amount, if you're looking for, again, go to those alternate spreads. So uh, an Eagles win by seven or more pays plus 224. You go six and a half plus 189, six plus 180, five and a half plus 162. You go down from there. That three, uh, three mark I said before is plus one sixteen, and the two and a half is minus one hundred two. So again, it depends. So it depends on where your mindset's at. If you think the Eagles are going to win by more than a touch or more than a field goal, then all of a sudden you're in decent plus money, right? The three, like I said, three and a half plus one thirty nine, four is plus one forty five. So you're looking much better. And if you go by your touchdown thing, we're into the two hundreds. That's that's just the thing that I look at when it comes to that. That's just that's where I look at it from where it's like, hey, yeah. you have to do something that's logical, but at the same time, too, it makes sense. It's math. Yeah. It's something we're not good at, but guess what? It comes back Terrible and applies math. to you in your everyday life. That's why we talk. That's why we like to come on here and talk. We don't add numbers. We don't crunch numbers. We Thank just goodness. see a number. We do that. And the reason why, folks, why I'm using FanDuel specifically is because FanDuel is running a promotion. Obviously, you know what the kick of destiny with Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. Yes. If you bet $5 on any prop or future for the Super Bowl before Sunday, and if Gronk makes the kick, you get a $20 sportsbook credit. Oh, so that's why the I'm leaning to use. Yep. So that's why I'm going back to FanDuel for Sunday. I, if you guys know, I have many books I use, but there's a good one in Canada, and I know Andy's a big fan of it, and that's sports interaction. So use whatever is yeah. comfortable. But also, guys, I'm going to say this because I really like to enforce this. Bet what you can afford. Please play responsibly. For any help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Um, Andy, before we head out of your take, because I know your time is limited and everything like that, I thank you for coming on. But I know that since we last talked, you, my friend, have a podcast where you've gone to talk to some pretty cool people. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's a real fun show. It's actually the same network that Adam Rank from the NFL Network is on. He had me on as a guest, and um, I love the show and the producers. And so they said, hey, you want to do a – a, Brown, a Cleveland Browns slash fantasy football slash betting show. I was like, heck yeah, let's let's do it. So it's called the Sick Podcast with Andy McNamara. Twitter at Sick Pod Browns. Myself at Andy MC81 on YouTube. Sick Podcast with Andy McNamara. Instagram at Andy MC Sports. And Griff, I tried to be like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to have some fun with it. You you guys know I'm a big wrestling fan, and so I'm like, how can I? What excuse can I use to bring wrestlers on to the show? And I found them. <laughs> I, I brought up the most recent one, Jerry the King Lawler, who apparently is quite ill now in Florida. So I hope he, you know, Godspeed King. What a guy. Oh my God. Grip, if for the listeners, Cleveland go, Browns fan. Go, well, he's a huge Browns fan. 
but he's also a, a comic book fan. He took me on an, I asked him for 10 minutes of his time. He stayed 30 minutes with me. And he took me, he's like, at the end, he's like, hey, do you want to tour my uh, man cave? I'm like, I, I certainly do. Uh, and so he took, go on and check out the show. Again, YouTube, just type in The Sick Podcast with Andy McNamara, or it's all on my, uh, at Sick Pod Browns, all that stuff. Check it out. He has like the Batmobile, like the Adam West, like from the 60s. I was like, is that the Bat? He's like, yes. I'm like, okay. And then all the memorabilia, comics, football, incredible so i've talked to jerry the king a lot wardlow from aw daddy magic was last week matt menard montreal zone what a guy love matt menard entertainer uh brian pillman jr spoke to him as well so uh i always try to wrap it around football in very loose ways but lots of betting and fantasy stuff too gotta love it folks that's why the ywc the w for a reason if you guys aren't aware it stands for wrestling so we love yes. every single thing about that but anyway guys we got one more football game to talk, and then you know what? It's on to Andy and I asking me, or I'm, I'm asking Andy, hey, why are these rookies so already in, in, independent for fantasy? Because you got to learn quickly that these guys are going to make an impact for your fantasy team, and there'll be a lot of talk of that throughout the offseason. Oh, yeah. But, Andy, if I had to ask you for a quick little summary on what you think the 2023 Cleveland Browns are going to be, mm. where would you put that? God. Oh my gosh! I hope I just I just hope that Deshaun Watson uh, winds back the clock to 2019 Deshaun Watson because otherwise that is a one of the worst trades in NFL history with how much they gave up draft wise. I think he'll get better. He's working with Stefanski to customize the offense to him, which was not his offense when he came in. Um, you have the pieces. They don't have a lot of draft picks. The key to this offseason for the Browns is shoring up that defensive line with Jim Schwartz in. He predicates himself on having stud defensive tackles. So if the Browns need to sign at least one stud in free agency at D-tackle, draft a guy, get another edge rusher, give me a, a, probably a run-stopper linebacker. It's pretty much all defense. <laughs> you do that, you get Jim Schwartz the pieces he needs. That guy's won everywhere he's gone. So I like their chances of making a, a run for the division if they can hit on those defensive sides. And, of course, ultimately, if Deshaun Watson can get back to looking like himself. Do you think Stefanski's on the hot seat or no? I'll tell you, he's going to be on the hottest seat of any coach if they lose that first game, 100%. Because there's no excuses, Griff. There's no excuses now. The excuse was, oh, I'm playing 700 days. I'm playing. Okay. Well, now he has. And now you had all off season, And now he's here. Go. Not just Stefanski, that whole regime, Andrew Barry, the front office, every, the whole analytics movement, the whole analytics movement has led to now. All of it. All the traffic, all the giving up, all the pass, all the, 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 it's all led up to now. So if you fail and if you gave up all that draft capital, you will be gone if you fail and you're that Browns front office and the head coach guaranteed. I had to ask it because why, folks? We ask the hard-hitting questions here on YWC Football Talk. I'm sure Andy and I will have a deep dive into the Cleveland Browns some point this offseason because – You got me fired up now, Chris. If you didn't listen to Saturday's episode <laughs> that came out – I was told or suggested, hey, try to talk to all 32 fans. I'm going to try to talk to 32 different fans of different teams. Right now, as a Colts notes, we can get into everything in the offseason. Why? Because unfortunately, after Sunday, it's all we can do. Mm -hmm. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for here. The Super Bowl preview show coming Thursday, February 9th. Look out for it. Andy, thank you once again. It's a pleasure as always. He's been a longtime guest and a good friend of mine, even though we've never met in person. But one day, we'll make it happen. <laughs> one day. But anyway, guys. Take care for now. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Play responsibly. And you know what? This has been a Degenerate's Guide to Super Bowl 57. Have a good night, everybody.